Welcome back friends, I'm your host Kennedy, and today on Most Amazing we are back again with part 5 of some of the most chilling celebrity disappearances in history. And these ones might just be the most insane. So without further ado, this is the top 10 missing celebrities we're still trying to find. Coming in at number 10 is Ambrose Bierce. A famous journalist and short story writer during the turn of the century, Ambrose was best known for his novel The Devil's Dictionary, after it was named one of the 100 greatest masterpieces of American literature. However, that would not be his only claim to fame. At the start of the American Civil War, Ambrose enlisted in the Union Army and fought in countless battles, once even garnering great respect in the local newspapers for his daring rescue under fire of a gravely wounded comrade at the Battle of Rich Mountain. By 1863, Ambrose was promoted to first lieutenant and went on to have a valiant military career. So when he disappeared from the public eye in 1913, everyone was completely in shock. Apparently in October he was on some kind of tour of his civil war battlefields, then by December he crossed over into the Mexico border, met Pancho Villa, the leader of the Mexican revolution, and asked to join his army as an observer. But after his crossover, he was barely heard from. His last known contact was a letter he sent to a close friend stating that the next day he was leaving for an un known destination. And from there, he vanished without a trace. No body was ever recovered, and he became one of the most famous disappearances in American history. Coming in at number 9 is Jim Thompson. In the late 1960s, Jim became a popular figure after nearly single-handedly saving Thailand's silk industry from extinction. And while his mainstream fame came from his commercial endeavors, he also had an interesting past that some believe may or may not have had to do with his strange and inexplicable disappearance. As it turns out, before he moved to Asia and became a wealthy socialite, he was an operative with the OSS during the Second World War, and not only that, it was also rumored that he may have even been a spy at one time or another. Right before he vanished, Jim was reported to be leaving on a motorcycle for Malaysia. Then on Sunday, March 26, 1967, he disappeared from Cameron Highlands and generated one of the largest land searches in Southeast Asian history to date. Sadly, the mogul was never tracked down, leaving some to believe he could have been taken out by the CIA or competing businessmen. Those are merely rumors, as no evidence can back up what really happened to him. All we know is that he was never seen again. Coming in at number 8 is John Anglin. In 1958, John and his brother Clarence robbed the Columbia Savings Bank building, landing the pair with a 35-year sentence for the crime. At first, they hopped around a few different prisons, but after a series of attempted escapes, they were transferred to Alcatraz, John arriving in 1960 and his brother in 1961. Once they arrived, they were pleased to see an old friend, Frank Morris. And after Clarence's arrival in 1961, under the wing of Morris, three of them and another inmate began planning their great escape from the island prison. Over the next six months, they began secretly widening the ventilation ducts until they were large enough to pass through, constructing makeshift life preservers out of stone stolen raincoats, and a life raft that was stitched by hand and sealed using liquid plastic. On the night of the escape in 1962, leaving behind look-alike paper mache masks in their beds to keep guards off of their scent, three of the four men climbed through the vents to their freedom. But by the time prison officials realized they were not in their cells, the men were long gone. For many years, it was kind of assumed they had drowned, as they were not incredibly well equipped for the rough waters. That was until 2013 when new evidence pointed towards their survival. Apparently the San Francisco police had been sent a letter claiming to be from one of the escapees, John Anglin, saying that they had all escaped that night in 1962 and that he was now an 83 year old man suffering cancer. The purpose of the letter, as was detailed, was in hope to negotiate his surrender in exchange for medical treatment, but no one was ever able to track him down after that. Coming in at number 7 is Natalie Holloway. While Natalie Holloway may not have been a famous actor or singer prior to her disappearance, her case sparked international headlines, turning her into a tragic overnight.
overnight celebrity. On May 30th, 2005, after a trip to Aruba with her graduating class, Natalie was meant to fly back home to the United States. But Natalie never even arrived for her flight. The last time she was seen was the night prior outside a restaurant with three local men who all claimed that they dropped her off at the hotel and had no clue what had happened to her. And when authorities went to go check the room, they found her packed luggage and a passport inside, but no sight of the missing girl. Things took a turn when one of the young men who was last seen with her attempted to extort her family out of $250,000 in 2010. His name was Horan Andreas van der Sloot, and he claimed to have killed the young woman and hidden her body, but would only reveal the location after he was paid. The FBI was notified of the bribe and went along with it, sending over the wire transfer. But as it turns out, his claim was entirely false and was merely a ruse to get some money. Sadly, in the 17 years since she disappeared, Natalie has never been seen nor have any remains been found. Coming in at number 6 is Frederick Valentich. On the evening of Saturday, October 21st, 1978, Australian pilot Frederick Valentich informed the Melbourne Air Traffic Control that he was being accompanied by an aircraft about a thousand feet above him. So imagine Frederick's shock when the air traffic control replied to him saying that there was no known traffic at that level. Now a little backstory. Frederick was a fairly new pilot who had twice applied to be in the Royal Australian Air Force, but was rejected on the basis of inadequate qualifications. However, this story doesn't end with a mysterious crash that one could assume resulted in a death. It's much more mysterious than that. After learning that there was not supposed to be anything above him, Frederick went on to describe what he was seeing, saying that it was a large, unknown aircraft that appeared to be illuminated by four bright landing lights. Starting to sound suspicious? Then he reported that the aircraft was approaching him from the east and orbiting above him. When asked to identify the aircraft, Frederick was not able to, only further describing its looks, this time mentioning it had a shiny metal surface and a green light on it. For the last time, the air traffic control radioed over asking to please identify the aircraft, to which he famously replied, it's not an aircraft. His transmission was then interrupted by an unidentified noise described as metallic scraping sounds before all was lost. To this day, neither Frederick or his aircraft have been found, and many conspiracy theories believe that he was abducted by aliens. Coming in at number 5 is Virginia Dare and the Roanoke Colony. One of the most famous disappearances of all time wasn't just one person, but in fact an entire colony of people. Back in 1587, during the time that Europeans were heading to the New World to start a new life, a group of 100 settlers found the small island of Roanoke, now modern day Dare County in North Carolina, and decided to make it their new home. Shortly after the group settled, it was determined that the man John White would be the leader of the group, likely due to the fact that his wife had just given birth to their daughter, Virginia Dare, making her the first ever English born child in the New World. However, after some time in the colony, John headed back to England in search of more supplies for his town. What was meant to be a short visit accidentally turned into a three year stay due to the Anglo Spanish War. However, once he was permitted to return, he made his way back to America only to find that his entire colony had vanished out of thin air. He looked around for clues for where they could have gone, but there was no sign of battle and no graves reported in the area, seemingly pointing towards the idea that they had moved to a new location. All John found was the word Croatone carved into a single wooden post. And to this day, the disappearance of the Roanoke colony remains a giant mystery. Coming in at number 4, Louis Le Prince. French inventor and the famed pioneer of the motion picture camera, Louis Le Prince is widely credited as being the father of cinematography. In September of 1890, on the cusp of international fame, Le Prince was looking forward to a planned tour to showcase his new invention across the United States. However, prior to his journey across the pond, Le Prince organized to visit his brother in Dijon. Then on September 16th, he was supposed to take a train to Paris with some friends, but got caught up, missed his friends, and ended up taking a later train. But strangely, he was never seen again. Of course, when the inventor didn't show up for his showcase, an investigation ensued, but despite exhaustive searches from French police and the Scotland Yard, neither him nor his body was ever found. There are quite a few conspiracy theories surrounding his mysterious disappearance, one being that he was assassinated due to his competing patent with Edison, while others think he could have taken his own life or been trying to escape financial problems. However, as he's never been 
found, we will never truly know what happened to him on the train that fateful day. Coming in at number three, Roald Amundsen. The year was 1928 when celebrity explorer Roald Amundsen vanished into thin air and was never to be seen again. Roald had become a world famous face after his 1911 expedition where he successfully reached the South Pole. And from that point forward, he was considered one of the greatest explorers to have ever lived. So imagine everyone's surprise when he went missing on a trip far less dangerous than any of his previous missions. The day was June 18th, 1928, and believe it or not, it was not even his own mission he disappeared on, but a rescue trip for an already missing person. Along with a crew of five, Roald boarded the rescue flight and headed for the crew that had crashed while returning from the North Pole. But neither Roald, his crew, or his aircraft were ever seen again. Due to his popularity, a search for the team began nearly immediately. But after no evidence of a crash and no bodies were found, it was called off in September. Years later, in 2004 and 2009, the Norwegian Navy attempted to search for wreckage of the mysterious disappearing aircraft, but they too never uncovered a single piece of evidence. And whatever happened to Roald Amundsen remains a mystery to this day. Coming in at number two, Raoul Wallenberg. A Swedish architect, businessman, diplomat, and humanitarian, Raoul's main reason for celebrity is due to his special operation in World War II to rescue Jews from German occupied Hungary, saving them from being sent away to death camps. In 1944, while serving as Sweden's special envoy for Budapest, Raoul provided special protective passports to nearly 15,000 Jews, identifying the vulnerable residents as Swedish, thus deterring the fascists from deporting them. From there, he set up the newly Swedish residents in safe houses advertised as libraries or institutes in an attempt to keep the real truth hidden and their real identities safe. Then in January of 1945, Wallenberg was called to General Malinovsky's headquarters to answer allegations that he was engaged in espionage. His last recorded words were, I'm going to Malinovsky's, whether as a guest or prisoner, I do not know yet. From the day he left, his exact whereabouts have never been determined, and the truth behind his disappearance has had many theories. You see, despite the Soviets declaring in 1957 that he had died 10 years prior, suddenly in the night, there are many that dispute his death. Several former inmates of the same prison have come forward stating that they saw Raoul after the Soviets had declared him legally dead, the last witness claiming to have seen him in 1987. While we don't know for sure exactly what happened to Raoul, as there has not been any physical evidence to prove his death, authorities have continued investigating the case as recently as 2012, hoping to finally track down this wartime hero. And last up today in our number one spot is Emanuela Orlandi. The daughter of a prominent Vatican employee, it was not only the Vatican that was devastated when 15 year old Emanuela disappeared from the Holy See in 1983, but the entirety of Rome as well. On the last day she was seen, Emanuela had apparently called called her sister after her music class to let her know why she wasn't home yet. A rep from Avon Cosmetics had offered her a job. At the end of the class, Orlandi then spoke of the job author with another female friend who left her at a bus stop in the company of another girl. However, reports state that the last time she was seen was getting into a large black BMW. The next morning, still missing, her parents were incredibly worried, so they called the music teacher as well as the police and she was officially declared a missing person that day. But sadly, they were not able to track down the young woman. Over the next few weeks, the parents received a series of distressing phone calls from people claiming to have their daughter. But authorities were never able to track down or determine who was making these calls or from where. It has been suggested that a Rome-based syndicate kidnapped her to force the Vatican to pay them back an outstanding loan, while other theories suggest something even darker an inside job by the Vatican police. Sadly, the truth of the girl's whereabouts remains as big a mystery today as it was 39 years ago, but still the case remains open and Pope Francis is determined to finally put an end to the family's suffering. Well, there you have it guys. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that subscribe button and let me know down in the comments of any other crazy disappearances you know of. I'll see you next time. Story. Frederick was a fairly sorry, can it slow down us? Just go.